So let's talk about Roselle. A lot of people know it as Florida Cranberry, Jamaican Sorrow, Jamaica. It's a bush that grows very tall. It is very versatile. You could do many things. You could do jellies. You could do food coloring. You could do water, agua fresca. Now for Roselle, you do need a long, warm season because YOLO, I put it in the ground in March once your frost dates are over and they fruit by November, October, November, December. So a really long, um, warm harvest. So it's February. I'm going to sprout my seeds this week so that they could be ready for mid-March once for sure, for sure, we're not gonna get any frost because those plants are very tropical. They do not take anything less than 45. They start getting burned, anything like 40, you see them all wilted and burnt. So you need um, very long warm season and they do need space. Now last year I planted some plants in my very good um, soil, which had like chicken manure um, I water it very well and then I plant it all along my fence line where our property is going like on a little downward hill and all the soil by my fence line is very sandy very dry and to my amazement both of them did perfectly well I very very little irrigated the ones by my fence line because my hose um, didn't reach all the way over there and they did very well even like better than the ones that i irrigated and the ones that i had in very good soil so soil really does not matter for these plants just as long as you don't let them completely die in the heat of summer um water them once in a while and they're good to go roselle is in the family of the okra and the tropical hibiscus um i love hibiscus very tropical very beautiful flower they will give you very beautiful flowers as well. And then after they flower, the little calyx um, pop out. So the calyx is what you're gonna have harvest. Last year was my first year growing um, Roselle. And when I first started harvesting, I harvested them pretty small. They were like about an inch, inch inches um, of big and it was a lot of work collecting some of those i was very impatient so i tried collecting them early which i learned my lesson don't collect early wait for them to fully grow and mature now once your plants start flowering and start giving calyx and they're ready to harvest make sure you wear gloves because um, the calyx do have like this very tiny fiber like hairs like fiberglass and then they do like go into your skin almost like a like a little itchy so wear gloves don't worry about these fibers once you cook it down um, basically they disappear and no need to worry about them but only when you're collecting them because you want to be um, wearing gloves and making sure that you are not all itchy by the end of your harvest now I let most of the calyxes from the branches because they branch out and they'll pop like a, boop, 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 like a bunch of calyxes in one branch, one stem. So I let them all mature to their fullest. And once I see that I have some little ones, but most of them are mature, I cut the whole stem off because otherwise it's a lot of work um, to individually pick. So I cut the whole stem off and I sit down and put in my wheelbarrow and I just pluck, pluck, pluck. Now the honeybees love these flowers. I, I have a lot of bees in my property when mid spring, summer comes and I have all my flowers going. But it's mainly like bumblebees um, and some other bees. But my honeybees, the honeybees around here came just for the flower and the nectar in my roselle. So that was very exciting to see and to witness. Once you harvest all your calyx, you do have to process them that same day or a day or two. And you do have to put them in your fridge if you're not going to process them that same day because they spoil so quickly and you do need to hurry, hurry up. Like, time is of the essence.
so to the farm part actually eating and enjoying this delicious fruit i do a lot of agua frescas which is basically like clay um organic clay um boil the flowers um it'll like take out all the beautiful color and it's so tart and then you just add sugar not healthy but hey sugar and then a bunch of ice and it's so delicious and sometimes i could i add also like pineapple to the to the drink and it tastes really good you can also make jams jellies and the rosal is very high in vitamin c and it's anti-inflammatory antiviral so very good healthy nutritious for you i also did like this tea um, mixture i put rosal i put ginger and honey like more natural stuff if you're gonna do it for teas um try not to boil the um, just like slow a boil not like a bubble bubble witchy witchy um boil so that you keep most nutrition to you and i did um ginger honey and then like oregano um basil you know all the good stuff that's good for like your throat and like just antiviral stuff so many ways you could cook this um you could use the jellies for like biscuits or like just toast um you could also do it like for like a cheesecake glaze uh it's very very good and i sh really really hope you guys try this very easy to grow they do grow pretty tall like eight feet tall and about five feet six feet wide so that's why i planted along my fence line or where um it where i have more most room for them i did have about 17 bushes in my property and that gave me a nice quantity to make enough jelly because if you're gonna try to make jelly you do need a good amount of calyxes so you if you plant one or two bushes i don't think you're gonna get enough to sustain yourself a good amount i try to have as much well i try it takes me a whole year to plant process and to make my jellies i start in the early year um seeding my my seeds and then transplanting them and then by the time they gave me fruit almost a whole year has gone through so i want to make the most of my time and i want to keep uh, a nice good amount so that i could have for the rest of the year obviously <laughs> um, i have a pretty big family so i need a lot but I mean just try I think four or five bushes for if you're first first time and you could actually like plant them very very close to each other and just make sure that um, you just water them on the hottest um, time of the year if you see the leaves wilting make sure you water them but other than that I pretty much ignore them the entire year uh, through the end of the year through the end of the season when it was almost ready to harvest um, you, I did see some powdery mildew so if you start seeing powdery mildew um, you can remove the leaves or just harvest what you have so that it doesn't spread to your calyxes the leaves are also edible you could eat the leaves I actually planted and gave a bunch of my leaves to my chickens um, you could eat them as like a salad they're tart and they're a little bit slimy um but very like almost like a cactus okra so it's a family of okra it's kind of has like the leaves are like a little bit um like okra ish uh that's why when you make jellies all you need is the calyx because the inside the the seed pod has um a lot of pectin so you don't have to add extra pectin to make your jelly so i hope you guys try this plant it's very 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 nutritious very very healthy um quit your sodas quit your iced teas you're gonna see an iced tea on the picture <laughs> when i harvest them but quit your artificial um drinks and switch to all natural i'm doing it i'm switching slowly i'm not perfect i do drink soda and other stuff but i'm trying to stop all the um, food dyes uh gatorades are really bad with the food dyes and your kids um it'll help mess up your kiddos i'm sorry um adhd's uh, anxiety they say sometimes even autism my, my youngest son is autistic so I'm trying to stay away from all 
the junk that this nowadays it's all over our foods and um little by little i am transitioning and i hope you guys come and transition to a better healthy lifestyle and let's go on this crazy adventure together